that gun crime is a pandemic in the region and that it was just going to be a matter of time before it reached our shores. That has nothing to do with, with, with the Prime Minister who holds the position of Minister of National Security. It has to do with the fact that we live close to the United States, we're located in a transshipment area, drugs going north or to Europe. And the Americans themselves have said to us, the more drug interdiction there is, is the higher the gun crime. Mr. Speaker, our security and the nation's safety is not something to politicize. It is not something for us to be flippant about. Second, the police as an institution, while it has a role to play in helping create a safe society. As an institution, the police itself can't guarantee or create a safe society. The society belongs to us. And crime and deviant behavior, Mr. Speaker, if it is prevalent, is a reflection of our society, our values, and how we bring ourselves up. So, Mr. Speaker, I will not stand there and hear people attack the institution of the Royal Grenada Police Force when I know how difficult, challenging, and risky the job of a police officer is. We should be thanking every man and woman who offers themselves to serve in the Royal Grenada Police Force. So, when you stand here with this hypocrisy and talk about people after four months of training are becoming police officers. When under your watch, there are people who never trained and became police officers. There are people who not one day. Never trained. And they became police officers. So, all I would say, Mr. Speaker, is be careful with the kind of worms you want to open. The idea to paint the picture that the police force is demoralized, that the police stations are falling down, that they haven't been repaired. Well, under whose watch did it happen? Who told Will and Thompson, call him up in what is called the place of unhappy village, Shedda? Who called him up there when he was commissioner of police and told him, you know, you're not my man? And unceremoniously dumped him from the office of commissioner of police? That is what obtained when you're a Mitchell Rain. When Fitzroy Bido was commissioner of police, let the police officers told, tell you what Fitzroy Bido said. God bless his deceased soul. He, Fitzroy Bido, is the 16th MP. And that they had to be loyal to that Mitchell. That's what you used to obtain with the Royal Grenada Police Force. So, if after you see so much trouble and constant intimidation, the lack of investment in our security apparatus, the failure to repair, I mean, you just have to drive around and watch the state of the police stations. They didn't happen in 2022 or 2023. They've been so for decades. So if after working in some of these appalling conditions and you realize pension is being paid now, and you made the decision, rightly or wrongly, to retire. Who's going to so criticize that? I've never walked in the shoes of a police officer. He's never walked in the shoes of a police officer. It is only because they have pension, they can actually be in a position to say, I've served long enough, and perhaps it's time for me to move on to something else. If there was no pension, 
They will have to stay there and grind and grind. Because never, there was never any intention to pay or settle this. So, Mr. Speaker, let's make it clear. I have no interest in interfering with the Royal Greater Police Force. And I'm going to say what people want to say. There's an honorable MP here whose husband is a member of the Royal Greater Police Force. Have I done anything? Did I call him up in Laura and say, you're not my man? Oh? You think if the roles were reversed, this was happening? Let's be real. There's Richard Duncan. There's Jemma Bain Thomas. There's Julia Roberts. Maybe the people 40 and under don't really know your track record. But who's 40 and over note? The current commissioner of police. What was done to him? So let's get it clear. I'm a lawyer by profession. All my life I've interacted with police officers. I respect the hard work they do. I support them. And as Minister of National uh, uh, Security, I will do everything I can to encourage, support, and to help the Royal Greater Police Force to execute its mandate. I am not interested in the nitty gritty of who gets promoted and who ain't get promoted. And that's for the hierarchy and the management of the Royal Greater Police Force and the Public Service Commission. I'm interested in the police officers working and doing their jobs, as difficult as it is. So, Mr. Speaker, we have said strategically the numbers are short according to the management of the police force. They need to recruit more police officers. We will support that. We have said that for institutions such as the Port Authority, who has the ability to pay for its own security, we want back the police officers in the police force. We have said to places like the Airport Authority, if you have police officers there, you can deal with your own security. You can get training from the police, but we want back the police officers in the police force. We have said, Mr. Speaker, that we will begin to install, come 2024, CCTV cameras in hotspots, in public places, to help the police with securing our public spaces and making sure that we're in a position to keep an eye on trouble spots and what is happening. We have said, Mr. Speaker, that we recognize From the time I've been in office, I've been saying this. Not because I have premonition, Mr. Speaker, because it is clear the trend is obvious. Anybody who's reading the statistics on crime in the Caribbean will see that gun crime is a pandemic in the region. And that it was just going to be a matter of time before it reached our shores. That has nothing to do with, 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 with the Prime Minister who holds the position of Minister of National Security. It has to do with the fact that we live close to the United States. We're located in a transshipment area. Drugs going north or to Europe. And the Americans themselves have said to us, the more drug interdiction there is, is the higher the gun crime. Because the criminals now are fighting for tough. So when we talk about the need to strengthen our firearms act, I'm not apologizing over that. A gun was meant to kill. It is lethal. It has no other purpose. And frankly, the only people who should have firearms are members of the Royal Greater Police Force. This is not some joke. Firearms are not things to glorify. And there are countless examples right at our doorsteps. If you want to come like Trinidad and Tobago, fine. Everybody now blames, each party blames the other party for the state of crime in Trinidad and Tobago. I'm not going on that route. So I have no intention, Mr. Speaker, of in any way demonizing the Royal Greater Police Force and not supporting them in their mandate to do their jobs. And we should all, frankly, take a bow and salute the members of the Royal Greater Police Force for the hard work they do. Mr. Speaker, the prisons. 
perhaps more than any other security apparatus, has been treated as a stepchild. I just want us to imagine the state of Grenada for a moment. If the 400 inmates, or close to 400 inmates, at His Majesty's prison were circulating within this country. So more than the police, Mr. Speaker, the prison officers are the ones whose life every day are at stake. They're operating in a building that was built hundreds of years ago, not meant for the use it has been put over the last several hundred years. And the fact that we have close to 400 inmates is not something we should be proud of as a country. So, Mr. Speaker, as part of our long-term goal, we have to reduce the prison population. We have to have less people going to prison. More people going to prison is not a sign of development. It's a sign of retaliation. And when the bulk of them are young and young men, it means our talent, a significant group of productive people, are not being productive. And so, Mr. Speaker, we have to recognize that there has to be significant prison reform and there has to be significant investment in the prison system. It is going to be a challenge, but it is something that we need to address, Mr. Speaker. And it starts with the human resource issues at the prison. The prison officers, the management of the prison, we have been meeting with them. We will continue to do so. It is not going to be easy, but the prison is not a place to play risk with. It is not a place to politicize. It is a place where we need professional prison officers that we support and appreciate the dangerous work that they do on our behalf. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to use the opportunity to publicly thank the Commissioner of Prisons, the management of the prisons, and perhaps more importantly, the junior officers who do the rank and file work every day in keeping us safe so that we can run up and down the country and run our mouths while they go to work late at night, early in the morning, come rain, come shine. So I publicly wish them and their families, and appreciate that some of them during Christmas will be working in prisons while we home having a nice time with our families. So Mr. Speaker, as a nation, we have to pay attention to those things. Hi everyone, thanks for checking out the Bob Report's social media pages. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch our weekly live show, follow our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can catch repeat episodes on Wednesdays at 4 and 5 p.m. respectively on CRFM Radio and GBN TV in Grenada. We are also viewed on Sundays at 8 p.m on WPG10 throughout the Caribbean. Thanks for watching.